Let's make the Testa di Moro statue from White Lotus season 2. Wow. If you haven't watched season 2 of White Lotus, First off, you should. I'm that guy who prefers watching Sopranos and The Wire for the eighth time over anything else because TV shows are just not interesting enough. But White Lotus season two left me kind of speechless. It was just so perfectly made. Gave me hope for new TV, honestly. Anyway, the Testa di Moro statue is a traditional Sicilian vase with a dark story behind it. And it was used all throughout the season for its relevant symbolism. I always thought it looked super cool and I figured it would be cool to make it since it's also not that complex. Apparently there is this home goods store from Australia called Alfresco Emporium that sells the exact statues they used in the first episode, so I used a male version as reference since they had high res photos from different angles, kinda perfect for what I needed. Maybe you could tell, but the face here is different. Well, that's because this is the first face I made, and right before I moved to this head wrap, I realized I forgot to hit record, which actually happened again later on in this video, god damn it. So the face you saw me make a minute ago was actually the second time I made the face. I ended up removing this face and using the second face I made. I think it really helped that the original statue has this organic, handmade quality to it, so it was pretty forgiving in terms of quality of the surface finish. It didn't have to be too smooth and perfect, but this was still more challenging than I thought. Hard surface ornamentation is a whole thing and requires specific sculpting techniques, which I'm kind of tackling head on for the first time since I started making these videos. So th that's kind of cool, but in a way I felt like I was taking a step backwards with this for some reason, since the last ones were more character and skin stuff and I kind of got used to that.
you like this content and want to support this channel, feel free to consider supporting on Patreon or membership where you can find these project files, free products from my store, as well as other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. You can also buy this model as a ZBrush tool, FBX and textured Cinema 4D project, as well as other 3D products on my Gumroad store. And I totally understand not everyone can support financially, but even subscribing or engaging with the content helps tremendously. Or following me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic. Either way, I appreciate you. I made each part separately, but the original statue has the face, head wrap, and crown all as a single object. So I ended up fusing all of them together and smoothing out the connected parts. Since there were a lot of overlapping parts, the detail projection had more glitches than usual, but they're pretty easy to fix. I usually need to smooth out those areas and reshape them. Uh, there was one area where polygons got disconnected, so I had to delete all the high subdivision levels, reconnect the polygons manually, then reconstruct subdivisions, which worked out smoothly. I know that a better way would be to save a morph target before projecting and then use the morph brush to fix the glitches, but I still constantly forget to use the morph target. It's super useful, but I just forget. Then I brought everything to Cinema 4D, UV unwrapped it, and since I really didn't care about the topology, the unwrapping was super messy. I actually ended up retopologizing again using the Z remesh guides to get a slightly better poly flow and unwrapped it again with slightly better results. It didn't really matter for this type of model, but still I always prefer having decent topology and decent UV maps. Then just added a few tiny details and onto Substance Painter. Since the face, head wrap and crown were all one model, I had to hand paint the mask for each part of the model, but yeah, next time I'll use ID maps. I knew a lot of the magic will happen here since this model is so much about the textures as it is about the sculpting. The textures have this super organic and hand brushed look that was a bit challenging to get. I was constantly testing out different brushes with different opacities and flows, trying to get that wet and watery brush look. For the green areas, I ended up overlapping a ton of different black and white layers with different noise masks and blend modes. Honestly, it was much easier than I thought. Substance Painter has really great noise patterns.
Then I ended up overlaying everything with more noise layers, just to break up the texture even more. These brown things in the back were the worst part of this whole thing. Every time I look at them, I think of doo-doo. And now, you do too. They're in the back, so I guess it's fine. Texturing in Cinema 4D, pretty straightforward stuff. I used the albedo maps as substance scattering albedos. Some subtle noise for very subtle roughness maps, obviously keeping it on the glossy side. I set the IOR to around 2 or 1.8, but ended up reducing it to around 1.5, which is closer to porcelain. First time I added the displacement maps, I didn't realize they didn't go through, so there was no displacement. Not a lot of detail on the face, so I didn't really notice it at first, but you could really notice when you look at the beard. Then I noticed one of the balls on the crown was all messed up, only to realize it was because its UV island was really tiny. I thought maybe the normals were flipped, but nah, it was just a tiny UV island, so I just scaled it up manually to match it up with the size of the other crown balls. That meant I had to update the UVs in ZBrush and re-export everything, so I took the opportunity to fix up some detail and mainly add more definition to the beard and mustache. I'm kind of noticing how when I'm in ZBrush, all the details stick out way, way more than they do in other programs. It's like ZBrush is tricking you that you got good details, and then you texture and render everything, and everything is so lacking. So yeah, just something I should keep in mind. Always push the details further than you think, and assessing the right amount probably comes with experience. And lastly, I was just checking all the details, making sure I wasn't missing anything, looked pretty good, and that's the final render. Pretty happy with how it came out, a good mix of sculpting and texturing challenges, really learning so much every time I do one of these. The cool thing is that there's so many versions of this type of statue, so part of me wants to keep iterating more versions of it, but nah, I'll just make something new. If you want to, you can buy this model on my Gumroad, I'll put the ZBrush tool and FBX and the Cinema 4D project with the textures, or you can sign up to my Patreon and get these project files. And to all my compas you see on the screen right now, Tivok Yobenni, Grazie Asai, I love you, have a great day, peace. <laughs>